The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Arizona, Ms. Lesko, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you to the speakers today. I greatly appreciate it. Extremely important uh, topic. So in Arizona, I represent um, parts of Phoenix and the suburbs of Phoenix. Um, obviously, we're a border state uh, as well. And so we've had more than 2,000 um, opioid overdoses in one year in 2021. Uh, and also that year we had 52,000 opioid-related hospitalizations um, and emergency department visits, a huge issue. Um, I put um, the blame on uh, an open border, and I think the administration should also be more forceful with China um, on, you know, importing allowing the importing of these opioid um, fentanyl, especially. Um, but obviously, you've also talked about how social media plays a role. And so I don't know, my question to any one of you is in 2021, um, Chairwoman Kathy McMorris Rogers and now the Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan um, had some draft legislation on reforms for Section 230. And it basically got rid of the blanket uh, liability protections for large businesses. I think it's still, if I remember, still um, protected smaller businesses. Would, if, if you're familiar with that draft language, would that help the problem um, with the social media and um, drug... Uh, uh, drug traffickers using social media to get to our kids. I'm, I am not familiar with that language, but I certainly plan to, to review it. Yeah, I mean, anything that provides a blanket removal of, of immunity uh, would, would go a long way. We're talking about our biggest platforms today um, as the ones that are responsible for um, the most fentanyl related deaths. Um, so if, if, if Section 230 is completely removed um, regarding, you know, for those platforms, that would, that would be, you know, a huge improvement and it would give parents who've lost everything the ability to hold these tech companies responsible, but it would also just signal to them, they would be incentivized mm -hmm. to be cleaning up the act on, on their, their platforms. That said, there are small platforms that are doing the devil's work, maybe not specifically related to fentanyl, but, um, you know, I, I own a small business. I, I own a law firm, and I have to, um, you know, I'm just as vulnerable to, to lawsuits if I do something wrong or if I harm somebody um, as, as a large law firm. And so, you know, we don't want... Um, to let evil companies off the hook just because they're small. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, the other question I had, and you've touched upon it somewhat of what parents can do, but is there any way that a parent could totally prevent uh, their child from, let's say, uh, being on Snapchat? Can they, is there any way to um, do that? From no. being on it, they absolutely mm -hmm. just have to not let them have it, and that would be the not only way. Not let them way. have a phone? or Not, not let, let them, them have um, Snapchat or any social media for that matter. But I can okay. tell you that just because your kid doesn't have social media doesn't mean they're not exposed to it. Uh, you know, there's kids that get harmed. You know, there there's these bullying groups on Instagram. I know a family personally that there there's a very racist group on there, and they Somebody was posting pictures of their kid and saying horrible things about their kid on there. Their kid isn't on this platform. Their kid has nothing to do with it. They don't have social media on their phone, but somebody, some, one of their friends is like, hey, did you see this? And there they are. So it, it's still seeping into the home. It's still seeping into their life, even though you think you're doing everything you can to protect them from it. And, and I would add that my answer would be no. Um, we at, at SMVLC, we represent over a thousand families of every political persuasion, every race, religion, background. Um, and we have seen parents who have tried everything. No phone, they get a phone from a friend. We have children, I, I mean, you would have to ban devices in schools 
We have parents who have had to forbid schools from giving their children devices because children know how to get around the Chromebook, for example. I had a 12-year-old explain to me how to copy the desktop so that you can bypass all protections. Um, and, and my specialty in my, in my prior practice was electronic discovery, and this was all new to me. Um, so my answer would be no. Without some sort of an opt-out list, a 1-800 number, without these companies actively providing mechanisms to help parents, mm -hmm. there is no way. Well, thank you. That's, you know, it's really good insight because, you know, I don't use some of these social media apps and I don't have young kids anymore. Um, so I'm thankful that you're here educating us on it because I believe we need to balance um, the, you know, because social media apps can do good things too, right? So it can do good things. It, it can also cause bad, bad things to happen. Um, and I think as a Congress member, I need to balance that out um, and figure out ways that we can address this fentanyl problem uh, through different aspects, whether that means reforming Section 230 um, uh, in, in, or other ways. And so thank you for your input. And I yield back. Well, thank you very much. The gentlelady yields back.